All right, we're finally getting to Kevin Bond Strat. I have all this video footage and I decided to cut it down into four videos. So we're gonna go ahead and lay out the body. I've got an African mahogany body and I'm gonna drop on a sort of plain maple, mild figured top and always check your camera here. I forgot I was zooming in, placed it back on, and realized that my footage is zoomed in from when I was cutting earlier. So note to myself there. But we're just going to apply some type on glue. This is a one piece back and a two piece book match top. So we'll get the top on, we'll screw it back in here, let it sit in my wine press clamp. Get the template screwed back on. Cut it out again at my bandsaw. This Craftsman bandsaw I've had for a number of years. It is perfect for cutting out guitar bodies. I've got a quarter inch blade in there. And if you want to start making guitars, I would recommend this saw to start out with. So then we're going to bring this over to my routing table and I've got a two inch bit top bearing bit there and we're gonna cut the body to shape I need to take off a little bit on the top so that it gets to inch and three quarter so we'll do that on my drum sander and then we're gonna finish laying out the rest of the body for the arm cutout and the belly cutout we're gonna plop my template back on here and we're gonna route for the back side we're gonna do the tremolo cavity We'll go through the body, we'll pop it through, and then add the filler piece and reroute. And then I don't have a bit that's long enough, so I've got a bottom bearing bit that I route through the top with my top bearing bit and then flip that body over and route the other way with a bottom bearing bit, which gives me the perfect size. This is one of my frustrations in working with trems is that they are not all the same size. This one is just slightly shorter than a standard trem or a vintage trem, whatever you want to call it. And even though I've got the template and I've brought it out here, I've got a little bit of a gap that I'll have to fill later that you'll see. But always double check your templates and sizes before you route every fender trim for some reason is significantly different. So we're going to do the humbucker pickup cavities. This is going to be a super strat. Got some awesome lace pickups that we're going to use. Kevin is a lace artist. So we're going to plop these in. I'm going to draw where they sit on this Warmoth custom made pick guard. We'll line this all up, route the cavities out for the pots. And we're going to do an output jack on the side. We are actually not going to do it on the top. So we'll route this deep enough. And then this is one of the things I wanted to show you guys. This is a trick. So if you don't have a big bandsaw, I'm going to cut this by hand. And since I laid this out by hand, I've got a Japanese pull saw. You can see my vacuum attachment there on the bottom. And I'm just going to cut from where I drew it on the top to where I drew it on the bottom. And we're going to make about 20-ish cuts. And if you look at where you cut on the top and on the bottom, you can do this by hand. You don't need a specialized tool. I've seen guys just grind this out. But you can do it by hand. It's just going to take a little bit of work. But if you don't have the big tools, this is one of my tricks for you guys here, a little nugget. So we'll go ahead and just chisel out each piece, dink it away. And then we'll come back with a file, file this stuff off, get it clean. I've got it right on my lines just right above my line and then when I start using these hand tools I will get it perfect. So I've got my chisels, spoke shave, cut this out by hand, get it nice and level. 
And then we are going to cut the belly cut out on my bandsaw once I check the height of it, which I thought I had done. I didn't. So I'll go back in here and make another cut. So two ways to show you how to do that. We'll then route the round over. And again, I've got a 3 8 bit. And we're just going to round over top and the back side. And we are going to bind this. And I've got a rabbit bit. I've got a 1 16th rabbit bit versus the Stu Mac bits. And now I've already got the round over. And this is the trick to do this. So we're going to run the rabbit bit across the body. So I've already got that curve on the top. We're going to run this all flat on the top side. And then once we're done here, the binding will be integrated into the guitar body. Never seen this done this way before. And I think it's my special process here. So it's the first time I've actually done this. Kevin and I talk back and forth on how to do this. And I have another video out there of me cutting then the arm cutout binding channel with a Grammel. Got a whole separate video I posted earlier for you guys on how I did that. But we're going to go ahead and lower this once more and reroute. So I've got the binding. I double checked it. And I want to make sure I've got the proper depth going down. And on the arm cutout, I don't go as deep. Can't go as deep down and then I, I run into the side, I run into the edge, I don't have as much room. But you can see me checking this out, see how it's going to look. And I'll glue in the binding with super glue, tape it in, and then I will round over the binding. And then when I do the black feathering, you'll see much later in the video, I've got a perfectly integrated piece of binding and you don't actually lose the strat vibe. So that's the second clean up here. One more level down to get this right. So then this here is the grandma. And like I said, I've got a whole video separate of this. Purchase this from LMII and I can follow the curve of the arm cutout. Creating this separate channel is going to allow me to get the binding following that curve. The router setup I have with the foot pedal wasn't accurate enough to lower the router into the wood exactly on that same height. Stu Mac has that for acoustics. I don't do enough work to justify that $280 expense. This tool I think was $30, $40 and it was actually kind of fun to do this. Woodworking for me is therapeutic and doing this fine detail work is really nice. So it probably took me in total maybe a half hour to do it this way. I went really slow and methodically. If I had a little bit more experience, I probably would have gone a little bit faster. But since this was the first time me doing it, I went slower than I probably needed to. And this was just a back and forth process. You cut a little bit, adjust it, cut a little bit more, adjust it, cut it a little bit more, keep moving the body around. And I was more or less playing with it in the beginning. And as you're playing with it, I could see you're already cutting. So all I had to do was sharpen the blade, set it up and go. Really not a complicated tool at all. And you gotta push a little bit and it requires a little bit of a feel, but nothing that a first timer couldn't figure out. So if you're scared of binding and you're scared of doing it on a router or you don't have a router like I do, a pin router, a top overarm router, whatever, it's actually pretty cool to do. I would recommend if you wanna do binding and you don't wanna invest a whole ton of money in tools, time and effort, etc. this was a nice tool. It was pretty quick, probably to do a whole top, maybe take you 40 minutes. Once you get moving, it's pretty easy. You just follow the grain. You go down into the grain. You don't come up against it. It was a little bit hard to do this on the edge. So I'm not only going on a curve, but I'm going 
vertically and horizontally against the grain. And then this is the top side. So I cut the bottom first and then came back and cut the top. And same process as before, you just drag it here and keep going. I cut the bottom first because it was a little bit thicker. So then we're going to start gluing this up. And I'm going to do two pieces, one for the body, one for the arm cutout. And I'm going to use my piece o junk Harbor Freight heat gun. And we're going to pre-bend all my binding. I always pre-bend, it glues better. And that Harbor Freight heat gun has only one setting hot, extra hot, whatever. And it doesn't work all that well anymore. So we're gonna clamp and glue this in. I am using Glue Boo Super Glue. Love this stuff, love super glue. Makes my life easier. I wanted to use a little bit quicker glue than some of the stuff I've used in the past. Wanted to try and make this go a little bit faster. This was the trickiest part to do. So once I've got it glued in, I'm gonna cut the top and the bottom to integrate the binding. I've got a trick then to remelt it and get it so that there's no line. So we're gonna cut off the ends and then glue the strip, put a little super glue, glue it down. The one thing I learned about doing it this way, integrating the binding into the top, was that the glue leaked into the wood a little bit in, so, in some spots. And when I stained this, I had to feather it with darker spray paint because uh, the glue had already sealed the wood and I couldn't get the stain to absorb. Worked out really well that way because it, it's got a really neat effect that I'm, I'm working on already. So we're gonna cut the bottom piece here, get it all clean, filed away. Again, this is that binding tape from Stu Mac. I wish they had had the brown tape. This is the L tape. It's just not as good. It's not as tacky. The paper isn't as strong. Once the binding is all dry, I've got a spoke shave, clamp this down and we'll just clean this off, go slow, get a file, spoke shave, sand it down. Didn't take all that long. And then we're gonna come back with the Stumac scrapers. I have both thicker scraper. The thick scrapers work great. These are one of those Stumac exclusives. I have the curved one and the flat one, and I use both of them. Really love these tools. And like I said before, I have got a GoPro now for you guys. You can see what I am doing in the best point of view at a close angle. And this required about similar amount of scraping as any other binding. And I've got the curve scraper. We're just digging in and getting the ends clean. So then we're gonna go ahead and trim the binding with my handsaw, file it down in one spot as well, make sure that neck sits right. I pre-drill for my neck with my 3 16th bit, and then comes the sanding task. And I start with 120, move up to 220, 320, and then 600. And this again is outside. I've got a blower fan going and I've got my dust mask on. And we'll just go ahead and sand the total body here, top and back. Again, I probably spent more time sanding than I did everything else. That is a manual process for the most part. Get all the scratches out, make sure everything's clean. Make sure I've got all the binding, super glue off, any scratches on the top. And then I will film part two here and get that posted real quick. So thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.